Racina's Omar Jimenez is in Dearborn, Michigan. We're actually in Dearborn proper. Uncommitted got more votes than President Biden. That's right. I mean, look, here in Dearborn, Dearborn's home to one of the largest Arab American communities in the country. And the vote uncommitted movement was led by Arab American activists over their disagreement with how President Biden is handling the Israel Hamas war. And as you mentioned, yes, when you look at unofficial results coming from the city of Dearborn, uncommitted beat Joe Biden 56% to 40%. Now, that's within a total of 11,000 votes. But when you expand that data countywide, here, that number is over 25,000. And when you look statewide, over 100,000 people voted uncommitted. Now, President Biden still did win this primary by a large margin. But when you look at the margin that he won Michigan by in 2020, that was around 150,000. So obviously a sizable margin there. And the goal of those that were leading this uncommitted movement was to send a message that President Biden needs to be doing more to push towards a permanent ceasefire. The results from Michigan's Democratic Party primary last night were genuinely stunning, and I think they sent a very clear message to President Biden. Stop supporting Israel or you risk losing the election to Trump in November. Now, the reason why this outcome was so shocking is because the goal from the Listen to Michigan campaign who organized this was to get at least 10,000 uncommitted votes since Trump only won Michigan in 2016 by about 10,000 votes. Uncommitted Michigan Democrats opposed to Biden's policy in Gaza can demonstrate that we hold this margin of victory for re-election. But they didn't just get what they wanted to get in 10,000. They got more than 100,000 votes. So the campaign was far more successful than they or anyone really expected. And regardless if Biden likes their message, he can no longer pretend like he doesn't hear them. Now, the pundit class is having a surprisingly sober reaction to this news. Case in point. It will be hard to win them back come November yeah. for President Biden's team. That's a real challenge. I wouldn't, I would expect that the president himself will travel to Michigan before long and attempt to repair those, those wounds. Joe Biden beat Donald Trump by around 150,000. In 2016, Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump by around 10,000. So 10,000 votes could sway the difference. And if these uncommitted Committed voters uh, keep this passion going through to November, it could be a huge warning sign and, and a big problem for Joe Biden. I'm not certain they're going to do so, but we heard also from Debbie Dingell, Congresswoman from Michigan earlier. She has been sounding the alarm to this administration for quite some time. We have to address the situation. The Arab Muslim community in Michigan is crying out for this. And the younger community in Michigan is doing so as well. And if he is going to really address this situation, he needs to do something much more serious than throwing out a, a possible of a ceasefire in an ice cream shop. It must be much more organized and it has to include a ceasefire and releasing the hostages. Yeah, I mean For the uncommitted people, this is about flexing their muscles mm -hmm. and showing the Biden campaign, look how many of us there are. This is Michigan. You will either win Michigan or lo lose Michigan based on how you act towards us. That's the message they are trying to send. And that message has been sent and received. Now, the question is whether or not Biden is actually going to be receptive. And at a minimum, it does at least appear as if he's trying to respond to Michigan voters in a limited sense. And we'll get to his response in a moment. But I first want to give you some additional context in the lead up to this vote. So MSNBC spoke with several 2020 Biden voters in Michigan, and some of them who are voting uncommitted were pretty clear about the fact that there was nothing Biden could do to win them back. But others said there's still a possibility that they will vote for him in November. Here's what they said. You cannot keep killing people with our money and just keep thinking that, oh, we are stupid enough to elect you again because we'll fall in line. We'll forget. How can you, how can, like, this is an insult to me as a voter. For you, much. Biden has a pathway forward. Biden has a pathway forward. And, it's not and what saying, does that look like? That is him calling for a permanent and immediate ceasefire. The straightforward, simple answer for the Biden administration is push for a ceasefire, stop aiding Israel in their war crimes, mm -hmm. and I guarantee you there are enough people who would be willing to deal with it and vote for the man. It is, in so many words, insane mm -hmm. to me to have the Democratic Party and the Biden administration sit here and essentially say, if Trump happens, it's your fault. If you don't want a Trump presidency, then 
Are you not worried about what he could do domestically yeah. to this country? I am. You know, it's like a vaccine. I'm willing to take short term pain for a long term gain. I'm willing to uh, uh, let go of Joe Biden and oppose Joe Biden, make him a one term president, punish Joe Biden by making him a one term president and pairing his loss with the genocide in Gaza. Why does our democracy, why is having a Trump presidency more important than those people's lives? Mm -hmm. Why is our democracy more important than thousands of men, women and children being killed? Now, to be clear, none of these people are voting affirmatively for Donald Trump, and many of them realize that Trump is going to be worse than Biden in a number of ways, including on the issue of Gaza, if that's even possible at this point. But what they want to do is set a precedent, as they explained. They want future leaders of the Democratic Party to know that they can't win an election while supporting a genocide. And by continuing to support this genocide, Biden isn't justifying those voters right there. He's defying his base. He's defying all Americans because a new data for progress poll finds that 67 percent of likely voters support a permanent ceasefire including majorities in the republican party and independents and quite frankly i really don't care what public opinion polls say because even if a majority of americans didn't support a ceasefire and they supported israel's genocide that doesn't automatically make it more moral right i don't base my morality on public opinion but if you're a politician who wants to be reelected, which is key these polls should absolutely sway you. Now, there was evidence that the Biden administration was scared shitless in the lead up to the Michigan primary. Politico reports Biden is outwardly playing it cool. He hasn't been to Michigan since February 1st, but his allies in the state say that behind the scenes, there is panic at the White House and inside the Biden reelection campaign. Quote, they are freaking out about the uncommitted vote, said a Democrat close to Biden. And it turns out they were right to freak out about the uncommitted vote because as worried as they were, I don't think that they thought the vote would be this high 100,000 uncommitted votes in a battleground state for your own party that's a really big deal i don't think anyone expected it to be this successful of a campaign so the question is what is biden actually doing to address their serious concerns and the answer is nothing actually meaningful in my opinion at least but he was absolutely trying to at least placate michigan voters and he said the following in an ice cream shop can you give us a sense of when you think that ceasefire will start well, I hope by the, the beginning of the weekend, I mean, the end of the weekend. At least my, my, my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. It's not done yet. And my hope is by next Monday, we'll have a ceasefire. Now, we don't have much details about the potential agreement that he's referring to there, but Gazans are worried that it won't permanently end the war for the fact that Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has already said that any ceasefire is only going to delay a ground invasion of Rafah. But having said that, though, any pause to the violence is important. But I'll believe it when I see it for the fact that we're also learning the following from Axios reporter Barack Ravine. Quote, the Biden administration gave Israel until mid-March to sign a letter that provides assurances that it will abide by international law while using U.S. weapons and allow humanitarian aid into Gaza. Now, this and a potential ceasefire aren't mutually exclusive, and this isn't a letter that's specific to Israel. They're making anyone who they give weapons to sign that letter. But the question is, what happens if they sign the letter and then just continue to do war crimes? What are you going to do then? Well, the article makes absolutely no mention of an accountability mechanism and really just feels like Democrats are trying to make us feel better about their desire to give more weapons to Israel. So when Israel inevitably commits more war crimes with the weapons that they gave them, they can say, well, you know, what are we going to do? We got them to sign our letter saying they wouldn't do war crimes, but they did anyway. So I guess our hands are tied. We did what we could. Well, I've got a better idea. Take that letter, shove it up your ass, Democrats, and stop fucking giving them weapons, you monsters. See, this is why I find all of this so insulting, because they know that we're mad, but they're not actually doing anything meaningful to change the situation. But with that being said, it is evident that the uncommitted campaign did have a significant influence on the Biden administration because the fact that he's even pretending to care, that is a pretty significant change. Now, Representative Ro Khanna has confirmed that Biden has been talking about his plans to broker another ceasefire specifically because of the Listen to Michigan Vote Uncommitted campaign. Politico continues, nothing in politics is a coincidence, Representative Ro Khanna told us about the election eve 
deceptive timing of Biden's statements. This is happening because the president is hearing that a large part of his coalition wants this war to end. It took Biden a long time to engage in personal outreach to Muslim and Arab leaders in the state, and that occurred only after lobbying by elected officials, one of whom said Biden's aides were keeping him in a bubble. Oh, that's nice. Kana, who often serves as a liaison between the White House and progressives, visited Michigan and was struck by the intensity of the anti-Biden sentiment. Quote, there is a deep sense of hurt and loss, pain, grief among the Muslim and Arab American community and the progressive community, Kana said. While campaigning with Biden before the South Carolina primary, he pulled the president aside and made it clear he had issues in Michigan. Quote, I said, you're losing progressives. You need to change, Kana said. He said, Roe, I hear you. I understand. I understand that people are upset and I am pushing BB. Pathetic. Now, that comment is obviously disingenuous because, again, he's pretending as if he is powerless in this situation when he is literally giving Israel weapons that they are using on innocent civilians. And on top of that, he is shielding them from accountability on the U.N. Security Council by repeatedly vetoing ceasefire resolutions. So he is lying. He's full of shit. Former prime ministers listened when former presidents demanded them to stop. One prominent example being Ronald Reagan, of all people. So the fact that Biden hasn't made the same exact demands and hasn't taken the same course of action as his predecessors tells us that he is choosing to let the genocide continue. It's a choice. And he can continue to do that, but he shouldn't expect people to believe him when he says he's serious about wanting BB to stop so long as he continues to do what he's doing, supplying them weapons and shielding, shielding them on the UN. Now, unfortunately for him, the anti-genocide portion of his base is very politically savvy. So him leaking stories to the press about him supposedly calling Netanyahu an asshole and privately stressing his concerns to him isn't going to make this go away. But while he's at least trying to make it seem like he cares about the concerns of Michigan voters, there was a simultaneous counter effort underway by Democratic elites to try to dissuade them who were prepared to vote uncommitted with a very deceitful scare tactics. So last week, John Fetterman went on MSNBC and claimed that anyone who is daring to criticize Biden is effectively a Trump supporter. And on Sunday, Michigan uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer echoed basically the same sentiment about listen to Michigan's vote uncommitted campaign. And here's what she said. Any vote that's not cast for Joe Biden supports a second Trump term. Wrong. Voting uncommitted doesn't help Trump. It helps Biden. Because if he doesn't wake up and stop supporting a genocide, he could very well lose Michigan as well as other states. So this was a test, and he failed that test. 100,000 uncommitted voters in a swing state is a very big deal. And if they don't take this seriously, they're going to lose. But I mean, that was a strategy for some Democrats before the vote. Uh, vote shame. Make people uh, think that they're complicit with Trump's reelection and not Biden if they don't support him. And we're still seeing the same exact strategy after the campaign as well. So, for example, Dash Dabrowski, editor of the Gen Z Perspective newsletter and a liberal Biden bro, responded by calling everyone who voted uncommitted a Trump supporting terrorist. I'm sure that's going to win them over. Now, some liberal pundits in mainstream media didn't go that far, but they made it seem like the results didn't actually matter. This was cope, but nonetheless, here's some of that. Let's look at the Ann Arbor numbers. Joe Biden didn't win Ann Arbor. Bernie Sanders won Ann Arbor. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. some of these areas have never been Biden country. Yeah. They have That's been really many more people that were further left and yeah. didn't like the idea of a moderate yeah. carrying the flag of our party. What would have been more concerning is if these voters voted for Dean Phillips. Now, if these voters had voted for Dean Phillips, there would be a fire alarm inside the White House right now and everybody would be out of yeah. that building and they'd be out in the campaign making this thing happen. Listen, people concerned about the genocide in Gaza didn't vote for Dean Phillips because he is also a supporter of genocide in Gaza. And if these people stay home in November, Biden could lose. I can't stress that enough. So if there's not already a fire alarm after 100,000 Democratic Party voters voted uncommitted in a battleground state, there should be. Now, as for Claire McCaskill, she is a loser who lost her reelection campaign to Josh Hawley after she shifted to the right and went full racist towards migrants. Now, it would be unwise for Democrats to listen to anything that this loser says, although I do find it a bit concerning that Biden has also now shifted to the right when it comes to the border and is embracing Trump's xenophobic racist policies as well. So, I mean, do with that information what you will, liberals. But I mean, pretty much any time a pundit tells you not to worry about the backlash from your own base, 
this, you should completely disregard their opinion because they're telling you what you want to hear and not what you need to hear. Now, the liberal sycophants that unapologetically defend Biden no matter what, even during a genocide, they're in a bubble. They're in a bubble in the same way that Trump cultists are in a bubble. Now, they might not want to hear that, but it's true. They might not care that the president that they're supporting is doing a genocide. But a significant portion of voters that Biden needs do care. They might not care, but there's a lot of people that he needs to win that do care. And they can pretend like criticism of Joe Biden is a threat to democracy, but in actuality, criticism of Joe Biden is needed right now to save democracy. And this was the message from surrogates of the Listen to Michigan campaign. Take Rashida Tlaib, for example. I was proud today to walk in and pull a Democratic ballot and vote uncommitted. We must protect our democracy. We must make sure that our government is about us, about the people. When 74% of Democrats in Michigan support a ceasefire, yet President Biden is not hearing us, this is the way we can use our democracy to say, listen, listen to Michigan, listen to the families right now that have been directly impacted, but also listen to the majority of Americans who are saying enough, no more wars, no more using our dollars to fund a genocide. That's the bottom line right there. The reason why she's saying democracy is at stake is because multiple polls show Biden is losing to Trump in Michigan, largely because Biden has lost the support of young people and Arab Americans due to his complicity with Israel's genocide in Gaza. Now, this vote uncommitted campaign confirmed that the polls were not lying. So Biden has two options, either immediately stop supporting Israel's genocide in Gaza or risk losing the election to Trump in November. The choice is his. And if he doesn't take their concerns seriously and ends up losing, if it's not already too late, it's going to be his fault and his fault alone, despite what Democratic Party loyalists try to say. You can't scapegoat voters here when he had months to change course, but refused to do so. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man.